Welcome to a 7 Series PCI Express Quick Take video. In this video, we'll be looking at creating a PCI Express design targeting a VC709 board. On this board, we will use a PCI Express block with an AXI to PCIe bridge along with a memory interface using our MIG IP core. Putting these together, we'll use the Vivado software along with design entry and IPI. Finally, we'll take this design and put it on the hardware and look at how it operates. The design that we'll be implementing will consist of an AXI memory space on the left hand side. There you can see that we've already mapped part of the MIG interface into the AXI memory space. The design will consist of a PCI Express to AXI bridge, the AXI interconnect, along with the MIG IP core connected to the DDR memory on the VC709 board. When the PCI Express system starts, it will create a memory map. That memory map will have our PCIe bars that we've specified in our AXI to PCIe bridge. Those bars create a window that will allow us to access a specific region of the DDR memory. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and create a new project. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll give it a name here that we can save under the project. something that will be easy for us to remember. Go ahead and click Next and we can click Next all the way through until we get to the Part Selection section and we'll select the board and then we can select the VC709 as that will have some benefits for us. One of the main benefits is that most of our location constraints and timing constraints for the IP that we select will now be already included in the design and we'll see that as we progress. Once we do that let's go ahead and create a block diagram the block diagram let's also give a name to. And once that gets created, let's go ahead and add our first piece of IP. In this case, we'll select the AXI to PCIe hard block. And we also need to add our memory interface core. So let's go ahead and select which of the DDR we want to access. And it'll automatically go ahead and create that core for us. So let's push in and we will go ahead and now set up our specific board. So we'll select by 8 Gen 3. So this is a new feature. Uh, this is a new piece of uh, IP from Xilinx. Notice that because we've selected by 8 Gen 3, the interface width is 256 bits wide. We'll use this information when we set up the MIG core. We'll set our IDs. We don't need to make any changes here. Even though we have 4 gigabytes of memory of DDR, we're going to only map 128 megabytes in. So we'll map the first one here and we'll let, set the address to 0. And then we'll map another bar to uh, also be 128 megabytes. And this one though, we actually need to change our address translation so that when the uh, read or write that comes in from the PCI Express side uh, hits here, we want to actually offset that by 128 megabytes so that we can access a different region. We don't need to change anything else, so let's go ahead and click OK and, and that will generate our PCI Express core. On the memory interface side, we'll go ahead and most of the settings are already in here for us. However, we do want to change the interface width to 256 bits as that will match the by 8 Gen 3 interface width of the PCI Express core and we won't have to go through any kind of uh, data converters to make those match. So let's go ahead and click all the way through here, get all of the settings that we need and we'll go ahead and generate that core as well. Now that we've done that, we can use our automatic connection wizard to connect up a lot of the uh, different settings that are needed. So as you can see we uh, get our AXI PCIe core, it goes through an AXI interconnect uh, and then that connects to our MIG device. Now there is a, an issue in the 2014.3 software uh, that we're going to work around here by actually disconnecting the PCI Express uh, interface and then pushing in and connecting the four different PCI Express interfaces, making them external. And uh, that will make it so that 
things will work properly. And then we'll also connect our AXI control clock. Those might change in uh, future versions of Avato, but for now we do need to do that. And let's also go ahead and run automation connection one more time there, as it said there was something for us to do. Now there's a few other things that we need to add uh, to our interface. The first one is a um, differential buffer. This will be for our PCI Express reference clock. So we'll need to push in and set this to an IBUF DSGTE. And we'll go ahead and connect it to the reference clock and make its inputs as uh, external so that they will uh, be input to the chip. We also need to add a, another piece of IP here, which is a constant. And this is just something that we need to connect to our AXI uh, PCI Express blocks. Um, we need to connect to our AXI PCI Express blocks uh, interrupt control signal, just so we don't spuriously send interrupts. Again, that will probably be changed in a, a future version of the software. So we can also go in here and change the reference clock for MIG to be 200 megahertz, uh, since we know that our VC709 does provide 200 megahertz. Now the last thing, or the, another thing that we need to do here is set up our address space. And there's really not much for us to do. We are gonna have the whole four gig uh, DDR memory as being accessible. And then the last thing we want to do before we leave here is we're going to put a mark debug signal on the AXI interface between the PCI Express block and the interconnect. So we'll be able to see any PCI Express transactions that are going through this design. And then what we also want to do is let's make some of these signals that we have uh, external that we can connect to the, some of the LEDs that are available on the board. So we'll look at uh, the link up on PCI Express. We'll look at init calibration complete on the MIG as well as MMCM lock on the MIG. So let's go ahead and save our design and validate. We should see that there's no errors or critical warnings. And once that is complete, we can go ahead and exit out of here and go on to our next step. So the next thing we need to do is create a wrapper around our block diagram. So if we right click on this, we can say create HDL wrapper and we'll let Vivado go ahead and manage that. Once it's managing that, it will create a top level wrapper file that will have all of the inputs and outputs of our block design that we have created. We could add other, other logic here, but we don't need to for this design. We also need to add a top level constraint file. So let's go ahead and go through and, and add this top level constraint file to our project. We'll give it a name that we know, make sure that we know that it is a constraint. And once we have that done, um, we'll have a blank XDC file here. Now we're going to be putting some constraints into this, so we don't actually want these to be used in synthesis at this point. So we'll go ahead and mark that this constraint file is not used in synthesis. And then we'll go ahead and run through and create a synthesis design. Once the design is run through, we'll go ahead and open it up. And from here, we can go ahead and set up our debug interface and connect all of the debug signals that we want to look at. Now you'll see here that there's a bunch of power and ground signals that are uh, currently the software's one when you're wondering what to do with them. Let's go ahead, we will select all of these signals uh, that, are, that are either VCC or ground. And let's make sure not to delete ones that we want, but we'll get those all selected. And once we do that, we can remove those signals from our interface by clicking delete or clicking the delete button. So that is all we need to do for that. We'll go ahead and click finish. And the next thing that we want to do is look at our clocks and make sure all of our clocks are defined. And so we'll run a, a report to look at the clock network networks and we see we do have a clock here that is not defined. This happens to be our PCI Express reference clock which is 100 megahertz. So let's go ahead and make a 100 megahertz uh, constraint and add it to uh, that design as well. 
And then we want to look at any of the I.O. pins that may have not been placed uh, already. So what we can do to make sure to find out what the different uh, I.O. pins are, we'll go ahead and open up the VC709 user guide and looking through here we can find our different pins. So here we find that the ref clock is on AB8 and so let's go to our pinout and we'll need to go ahead and uh, select that particular ref clock and we will set the appropriate site. Now the other thing we need to look at is all of our LED pins. So going back to the VC709 design we can find the different uh, LED assignments and we'll go ahead and and find those particular uh, signals and then we'll go ahead and mark them. Now even though it says LVC MOS 18 which is what we want notice that it has a red default next to it. If we don't go in and actually specify that we will get a error in BitGen as, as it will say that is a default value you need to go in and actually set that value correctly. So let's go ahead we'll finish up here uh, finish all three of our LEDs and we will get all of these LVCMOS 18 I.O. standards set and that should be all of the pins that are in our design now are assigned. So we go ahead and click save and that will save all of our constraints into the constraint file that we generated. And so here you can see we've got a debug core that's been created. We have all of our pins and I.O. standards uh, have all been saved into this particular XTC file. So let's go ahead now that we have everything ready, we'll go ahead and implement the design. While that design's implementing, let's take a quick look at the VC709 board that we'll be using. So this has a 690T on it, and you'll see that we've already plugged it into our PC chassis. We need to connect our power, we need to connect our USB to our PC and we'll go ahead and power on the board. Now that our design's done, we'll go ahead and open the hardware manager. And you'll see as we open it, there's an error message or a warning message here saying I can't find your, uh, or the there is no ILA core. Let's go ahead and program our device. So there's probably an old design on there. Once the done pin goes high, we can go ahead and turn on the PC so that we have a PC Express reference clock and we'll go ahead and refresh the design. And now we can see we have all of our debug signals are available to us. While we're here, let's go ahead and we're going to take the two valid signals, the read valid and the write valid, and we'll just look for one of these uh, signals being asserted uh, in our debug core and we'll OR those together. So either a read or a write is what we want to look at. And once we have that done, we can go ahead and, oh wait, one more thing that we want to do. We actually want to set our trigger position so that it's not right at zero. Let's offset it a little bit so it's at 100. And then we'll go ahead and set the core uh, debug to trigger. So now we need a way to exercise our device. Now Xilinx has a wide variety of X apps and white papers that we can use to uh, help us here. In this case, we're going to go ahead and browse down uh, through the Xilinx website to PC Express specific uh, app notes, and we're going to look for something called the Met driver. And this Met driver uh, is a very simple Linux driver that we can put onto our PC and use it to exercise uh, the device that we've created. To use the Met driver, we have to log in as a super user. And we can go ahead and log in, and then we run LSPCI, and we do see that there's a Xilinx memory device uh, there that, that is there once the PCI Express is booted up. And we can run LSPCI with VVV to get a lot more details, and we see it did indeed boot up to Gen 3 by 8, which is what we wanted. So now let's go ahead and go into the XAP 1022 Linux driver. And what you'll see in here is that we need to, we can run a make command, and we'll go ahead and make clean. And let's real quick look at the .c file, or the C file that's here. Now notice we do need to set the vendor ID and device ID to match our particular design. We've already done that. We'll run make clean again, because you can never be too clean. And then we'll go ahead and run make, and we see our design compiles. The next thing we need to do is run this make device script, which will put our PCI Express design 
uh, into the Linux side. And then we load Insmod, which loads the device driver into the kernel. And then last we put .met, and that will run our PCI Express design. And we can see now we're getting traffic and we're getting passes. We do see that our design did trigger, and we can see that there's traffic there. So as you can see, we've gone all the way from concept to hardware in a little less than 15 minutes. And that is the power of PCI Express, the memory interface core, and Vivado IPI.